This is one of my favorite exhibits of all time. It's the tennis ball launcher and we developed this for COSI Square Wheels over 20 years ago and we've probably built 25 or 30 copies of it. Uh, and we've made modifications over the year of course. This particular one is outside. It's the first time we've built one outside. We've uh, it's been successful, but generally this exhibit goes inside your building. It's really neat. There's a tremendous amount of science in this exhibit. But the basic operating principle is over in this column, there's a bowling ball. And that bowling ball is inside an acrylic cylinder. And it's a fairly snug fit, so when the bowling ball falls into the acrylic cylinder it compresses the air. Up above the acrylic cylinder there's a cage that guides the ball and it's covered with perforated metal so you, you can't get your fingers in or anything. But since it's, it's ventilated and not sealed it allows the ball to fall at full speed. Now you pull the bowling ball up to the top and when you let it go it enters the cylinder below and on the other side it shoots the tennis ball. So what's happening is as the bowling ball falls it's compressing the air in this cylinder. It travels across the clear cylinder on the bottom into this clear cylinder that we put here specifically so that the kids could see that there was nothing under the tennis ball. There's no spring, there's no plunger, there's nothing hitting it. It's only the air. Sometimes we put little uh, telltales in there so they can see the airflow. Now, what makes the exhibit work is the swept volume of this cylinder is about 16 times what the swept volume is of the smaller cylinder that the tennis ball is in. So whatever the theoretical speed of the ball is here pushing the air, the air in the other tube is moving approximately 16 times that speed. Now that's the textbook explanation that doesn't take into account leaks and friction and whatnot. And actually this exhibit, because it's outside and the wind blows, it was shooting way too high in the air and the occurrence of the tennis ball being blown out of the net was like every other launch. So here we intentionally made the thing leak some air. So this could shoot inside a building where there's no air currents, it can easily reach 40 feet of height with the tennis ball. So you can shoot it up three or four stories if you have a big atrium. So it's very easy to operate. People say, well, can little kids do it? And I say, well, if the kid weighs more than the bowling ball, they can do it. And, and small kids that weigh 20 pounds will grab the rope, you know, put all their weight on it, try to pull themselves up, and they'll raise the bowling ball and they let go and they can do it and it shoots just as high as when, you know, an adult does it. It is great to see two science teachers sort of get into an exhibit to where they actually are trying to, to figure out what's really happening. I mean, what's happening with the compression of the air and how is the energy really transferred and, and what is the relationship between the mass of the ball the bowling ball and the height of the tennis ball. And uh, there's some interesting surprises there because for, for one thing, the, the heavier the bowling ball is, in general, the tennis ball will go higher. We use a 16-pound ball. We found that that's enough. But it's interesting, even if the ball were to weigh a 1,000 pounds, it would still fall at the same speed. So when it came to this cylinder, it would not be slowed down quite as much by the air, but you would not have a tremendously greater shot with the tennis ball because regardless of how much the ball weighs, it still falls at the same speed. So there's that aspect of science too. 
So when the ball enters this tube, it's moving at the same speed regardless of its mass, you know, and that's sort of a good starting point for discussions on, you know, how it really works and, and what's really going on. And I guess that's one of the reasons this is one of my favorite exhibits because there's so many points of discussion into it. And it just makes a really cool sound and it's fun to do. Kids will do it. 50 times in a row if nobody's waiting in line.